thanks to Judge Gooden and um, District Department of Children and Families Attorney Sam, Solini, Sam Summer Salina. This was about the 13th anniversary since it took my child and put her in foster care. Now, there was no abuse, abandonment, or neglect. They simply took this child because I was appearing on television and talking stuff that they couldn't understand or they didn't want to hear from a black person. So they come to this conspiracy of um, me abusing and neglecting the child, which they haven't proved nothing in court. In fact, some of the Saladino give me a case plan, things I need to do to get back my child. Stable housing. I've always had stable housing, but alas, my house was not stable because one house I was in, they intentionally put it in a low um, voltage um, so that when we put on the fridge and everything, it's constantly blowing and low fuels. So we moved from there to another place. And then suddenly the, the, the sewer started to leak in the yard. And then we tried to move to another place. Um, so they were able to show the court that we had no stable housing. But initially there was no problem with housing because we had a place. But they came in and they created situations that we had to move around and it looks unstable. I was working as a substitute teacher. And in that job, you know, you move from different um, schools uh, but you, you, I'm getting my full uh, week's work, plus I had a lawn care business I would do in the evenings, weekends, and during the summer. They said that I don't have, that's not stable um, employment. They tried to get me into psychiatry. Um, the, the psychologist, he says that the only problem he found was that he couldn't verify my education, whether I do have 10 college degrees or whether I have um, the type of uh, employment opportunity experience I have. And so he says, since he can't prove that, he thinks that uh, I need long-term counseling. I went to this counselor and she's telling me that, don't you think that because your culture is different from America that you did might think that you were crazy or whatever? I said, where do you think I'm from? I'm from the British Empire. Um, she says, well, anyway, I want you to write me stating that you have mental problems, you have faulty thinking, and you have behavioral problems, and then I'll be able to treat you. But I don't need no treatment. I don't know why to send me here to you. So she says, well, you know what? I can't deal with you no more. I'm going to have to um, sort of um, violate me. So she said, she sent me back to say, this guy is not cooperating with the program. So now they're saying, and she says that I need um, to uh, visit to the psychiatrist. So now they say, recommend that I go to see a psychiatrist and be placed on medication. Now, I'm not no threat to myself, no threat to nobody. And you know what? When this person came to take my child into custody, the day before in court, they said that uh, the mother must move from the home and I have custody of the child. Well, I'm working. I left the child with her grandmother. She says that when she came by my place, she found the child and, uh, uh, and her mom alone. But the child was with her grandmother. The mom had to be around. In fact, I called the police to tell them that she had to go. And the police them said, look, as long as you can show me that your name is on something in this place here, the rent receipt or the um, light bill or the phone bill or something, you, uh, we can't move you. I asked um, them for some of the for a court order stating that she has to go. They didn't give me one. Now, here what they were trying to do. The person who came and took my child after calling that, you know, this lie, she told them, the, 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 grand, the grandparent and the, and the mother that even if I weren't there, they would have taken the child still. So now she's trying to provoke me, see? Now I'm asking myself, if I were there, she come and tell me that, you know, your mom is here and you leave the child with her and all this stuff, what I would have done? I mean, she keeps her phone cocked. The cops is right around the corner. I mean, she's looking for me to threaten her or do her something. And then they'll say, oh, oh you're a threat to the public now. And then I have to go and see. They're going to arrest me, put me in jail. If they don't kill me in jail, then they're going to have to go to see some psychiatrist. And when it's a court order and he recommends medication, I have to go on it. And the, the whole purpose of the medication is to hurt my brain. All right. And bring me to the place now where I could become a legitimate um, mental health uh, or mental hospital patient. You see how evil they are? And uh, Judge Gooding and, you know, some Saldino, they planned this thing so good. My attorneys did nothing. The mom's attorney, um, she wanted to go into child adoption because that's more profitable than defending parents. And so um, some Saldino promised her that if she gets this child, that, um, you know, she's going to help her out with children. Because for her to do adoption, she has to get a children from the Department of Children and Families. She will say, look, I need a white child with blue eyes or green eyes, this age and that age. And they're going to say, oh, um, you know, I know a parent that have a child of the, we can get her for you, no problem. Just got to wait a couple of months. Then go and take the parent child, frustrate them with the case plan or whatever. When the parent give up, they take the child, give it to her, she makes money. And so she, they defend us, right? Um, my attorney, he was already working in adoption. He just stood by and they presented this um, 
12 pages of my problems and, and I mean he never even challenged it he never even challenged it on the grounds that um, the mom is a, is a known felon five felonies five misdemeanors for moral torpitude um, he never did nothing he just said bye because he doesn't want to upset them he's gonna get job from the judge and they, the Department of Chair and Family gave him children to adopt out. So I see how corrupt these people are. So this is the 13th year since they took my child. They took her the day before her birthday, her first birthday. And we had to celebrate her birthday in captivity over the Department of Chair and Families. They're just trying to provoke me. But you know what? Um, they gave us time to visit the, with this child. And um, the mom is saying, nobody's here, let's run away with the child. Again, they're trying to set up an opportunity. But I was waiting outside because I was so upset the way the child comes, dirty diapers, you know, abused marks. She had a big black mark in her face. Um, and I saw a guy circling the building, uh, driving around the block. And he looks as if he has a rifle in the car. So if we run to this child, they just call him up. He come and says, a hostage situation, shoot me through my head. And that's the end of that, you know. So um, I said thanks to Sam Somersal, you know, um, you know, parents that they've taken the children usually end up with heart problems, but thank God I don't have one because I realized that this is something I can't change. I just have to, you know, let them do what they want. I mean, they're going to be able to do what they want forever because uh, civilization has shown that people that abuse the rights of people, like how they've abused me, if they do this and it becomes very predominant and so on. The next thing is that it's over, you know. So that um, I still would like to see this pile of uh, real estate continue to prosper, but I, it's beyond my ability to stop this stuff that they're doing. You know what I mean? The FBI and and them, you know, putting a camera in my house, taking pictures. I mean, there's no court order because I'm not doing anything that they need to be doing all this surveillance on some assault. You know, you know, getting intelligence from them, well, getting stupidness from them because they're no intelligence. I wasn't abusing no child. Um, you know, all all the scene is my private actions. Um, we go on and you know tell the other mom don't let me see the child and I don't know if they even took him and put him in foster care. I went over to Florida about a, a year ago or so looking for him, but um, I couldn't find him. And so uh, thanks again, Samadina. Thank you for taking my child and putting him in foster care. I hope you don't have no children, and I hope that they, if you have, they take all your kids and put them in foster care. I hope that they fire you for the kind of stupidness you've been doing, you're violating the American Constitution, the Florida Constitution. You're not worthy of being an attorney. You don't do the things you've done to be an honorable attorney. Now, I don't know how you guys asleep at night. I mean, if I, I want to be an attorney, and for the longest while, they're preventing me from becoming one of the FBI. And um, if I'm an attorney, I wouldn't do the stuff that you guys do, man. I'd fight less cases because I'm not going to sell people out. I'm not going to play this game that you guys play, you know what I mean? So, um, I hope that, uh, you know, your, your medications is right so that uh, you don't have to, um, you know, be taken out from the courtroom and put in a mental institution in a straight jacket. But what you've done me, I'm sure my God is going to look out for me and, and you know, he's going he's gonna to bother you. You know, you can't sleep, you can't, you know, focus straight. Uh, I wish you all that God is doing. Uh, I wish that he does more of that.